What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another movie review. I'm Chase Lee, reviewing for DallasMovieScreenings.com, and the movie I want to take a look at right now is Otto Agi and the Cakes of Versailles. Now, this one comes from IFC. It is directed by Laura Gabbert, and this one follows Chef Yodam Ariagi and his quest to bring the sumptuous art and decadence of Versailles to life in cake form at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Um, it runs at an hour and 15 minutes, and uh, so a pretty short documentary. Um, if uh, you have an hour and 15 minutes to spare, it's honestly not that long. But uh, yeah, you know what's really funny is this is not the only hour and 15 minute documentary I've seen this year. So maybe maybe this is the new trend. Maybe documentaries will be made at this time length. So and sometimes it, it's justified. So going into this, I didn't know what to expect, but this was just kind of one of those ones uh, that IFC slips to you and it's like, hey, you want to review this one as well? And I like documentaries. I like um, cakes. <laughs> I like baked goods. I like the the craftsmanship of uh, baking and and cooking. And you know, uh, I, I love art. I've never been to the Met, but I love when it is showcased in TV shows or movies. So I was like, hey, this seems like a pretty simple recipe of a documentary to be a pleasant watch. You watch it and you move on with your day. So I saw it, and it's not for me. Um, it, I, I'm just going to cut straight to the point. I really didn't care for this one whatsoever. I appreciate some of the things that were in there. And it seemed like there was a lot of pieces that were, you know, put up on the platform and like we were, we were seeing the story kind of laid out. They just didn't really do anything with it. It didn't feel like it was in, in depth in any way, shape or form kind of surface level storytelling, but the pieces were there. And I just, I felt like it could have been maybe longer, maybe uh, rearranged, but um, some of the people weren't interesting. Some of them were uh, the food looked fantastic. And the ending was pretty bad. It was weird. It was a it was a huge mood shift that didn't make any sense with the rest of the movie. So there's my complicated thoughts of, of the overall thing, but let's break it down a little bit. So um just some minor things first before we get into some of the bigger problems. I appreciate Laura Gabbert showcasing these uh individual chefs and showing how hard that they work at their craft. I mean we're talking decades of experience and how how focused and how disciplined they are to just craft such beauty and like delicious looking food. It's just, it's absolutely incredible that um, the range of people that she shows in this documentary and showcasing like what they do and how different they are from one another. Cause every single chef and pastry chef, they have different techniques and they're all, all of them are unique uh, in, ter- in terms of their skills and how they present their food she showcased that, and it was really interesting to see different techniques from different people. So I appreciated that as a you know cooking and baking show, uh, reality show uh, junkie, as well as making food. I love all that stuff. So and the food here on display is just absolutely exquisite. The cinematography lends that, and just showcasing the uh, intricacy and the colors and. Just everything about the food is just so inviting. And so I will give her credit on that. Um, I do like the food presentation and the uh, chefs doing said food. Um, So some of my issues. I, th- I I think the energy of this documentary is kind of kind of down a little bit it's kind of slow and i don't mind slower made documentaries if they're interesting and the people that we're following are interesting but there was something about the rhythm of this story that just felt kind of meandering the music didn't really help it like really wanted to put you to sleep and i just didn't really feel like it lends itself to the the fast-paced environment and the intensity that chefs go through and just putting this type of event together it just seemed kind of you know, mellow and just like kind of chill and relax. And I didn't really think it fit the energy of what was happening on screen. And so I thought the overall rhythm and pace to this entire story was uh, the opposite effect. And um, that that's an easy fix for sure. But that's just the way I kind of saw it. And it actually made some of these sections um, make the make the whole thing feel longer. And you don't want that for an hour and 15 minute movie. You want to have it as precise and tightly edited as possible. Second thing, um, I didn't feel like the event at the end of the film stuck the landing in terms of like this big high note 
that you want for this journey. Because th- that's what they're doing. They're, they're setting up for this event. Um, Chef Yodum is uh, recruiting all these other chefs to do all these um, separate things and uh, components to the entire event. But when we get to the actual event, it just seemed anticlimactic. It didn't have that that punch that you need, that, that final moment where we're like, wow, the journey that these people took, they're here, this is the moment, the finish line is there. But when you get there, it doesn't, it doesn't show off anything. It doesn't show showcase uh, like much. It's just some food shots here and there, and then just the event is over and it's just done. And I, I don't know. I didn't feel like it had that level of the climax that you want for your type of um, journey for like this particular movie. I just I didn't feel like it was there. And so when it's finally there, you're like. Okay, I mean, I guess that was nice. I mean, I spent an hour and 15 minutes to get to this point. Cool. You know, we got like six minutes left. Like, I I don't know. I just, I feel like when we got to that, and maybe I'm just nitpicking and people are probably watching. It's like, yeah, you're nitpicking. Fair. Um, But I think getting to the actual event and then finally showcasing uh, the food and everything, I just, it didn't really do it for me in terms of like, oh, wow, they made it. The struggles, the accomplishments that they had in the kitchen. This is it. Didn't feel any of that. Speaking of the end, not the climax, the end of the film makes no sense with everything else going on. The closest tie that they have to the actual ending and what they were talking about throughout the film was the uh, royalty aspect of Versailles and how um, certain foods were correlated to royalty and how certain ingredients were hard to find and they were only reserved for royalty that's like the only like loose connection I can even like pinpoint as to why the ending is the way it is. But the ending of this film makes no sense. And it feels like it's a different, a different documentary. It's a different thematical kind of mood where like they present it and they're like, okay, this is our stance on this. This is the point of this section. But I'm like, how does it tie into the overall thing? Uh, case in point, they showcase someone's name. I'm not a fan of the person, never have, never will. I don't mind when that name is in certain documentaries or in certain contexts, but it makes no sense for this context of this film. Get out of here. Um, and just that whole section about Mary Antoinette, it just it didn't feel like it was the right place. You could have had a different ending to kind of wrap everything up and you know roll the credits. It just felt like they were starting a new chapter into the documentary and then it just quickly ends and you're like, that was the whole message of the movie? This cautionary tale? So I, I don't... It, no. <laughs> it's a complete shift and it just doesn't work on that front. Um, so yeah. A couple other things. Uh, one, uh, I thought some of the interview shots, since this is a documentary, I like to comment on this quite a bit. The interview shots of... Um, uh, certain people, uh, sometimes Chef Yodum and some of the other chefs, I didn't think they were that interesting to look at. It's usually, like the interview shot of a documentary is like stack that thing in the background, like you know, make it make it look pleasant to look at, and have it really uh, accentuate the character and the, the person that is talking in, on screen. The interview shot it should not be noisy, but have enough stuff in the background to make it look interesting in the way you you frame it everything i thought the interview shots were kind of lazy i'm just be honest and so um yeah it felt like it was like uh, secondhand like they got all the b-roll shots and like oh we got actually get the interview shot and like they did it really quick some of them were handy cam and definitely not stationary so i'm like that's what gives me the impression that they they rushed it a little bit but yeah some of the interview shots were just not no <laughs> But I think the I think the real core issue of this thing was that the main character, Chef Yodum, who had some interesting um, kind of life events that happened in his background with like his training and you know growing up in a, a career that's primarily masculine and he's you know a gay chef, all that stuff was interesting. But it's quickly said in one ear and out the other, and then we're moving on, and. That's kind of the real issue of this entire thing is that we're focusing on so many people and so many aspects that it doesn't give anyone any time to create depth for themselves. It doesn't um, 
allow us to emotionally attach ourselves to this journey that they're taking us on. It's just kind of basic level storytelling. And, you know, uh, Chef Yodum is doing his thing at the beginning. He's setting up the event. And then they have uh, a, a section in the middle where they're talking about his background. They should have put that in the front. But, you know, once we get to that part, like, it just, you know, it, he says his things and we just kind of move on. And they kind of do that with all the chefs. We give them, like, a, a little bit of time to talk about their life and their background. But it's not enough. And it's just... It's just, it felt like it was more like to pad out the, the runtime rather than um, give us these really interesting people. And it just, I don't know. It, it That that to me, when you have Chef Yodem as your main person, he wasn't interesting. Some of the chefs were slightly interesting, but we didn't get enough time with them. Once again, it's just kind of like a balancing act. I, I don't know how to fix this. I'm not here to fix this documentary. I'm just giving you my experience, but you know, uh, maybe make it longer to give people more time and to get your points across and your messages. I, I don't know. I just, just giving you what I saw, but yeah. Um, besides some of the creations that the chefs make and just some of the, uh, the work that goes into it, which I deeply appreciate, it lends itself to some really nice cinematography. And I learned a little bit of historical tidbits, uh, with the Versailles, um, kind of history and you know chef yodem kind of taking us through that um and some of the chefs were interesting and you know but there's just so many problems with that that i just i can't bring myself to even recommend it it's just it's just kind of a dud for me in terms of a documentary um so i'm gonna give uh, aragi and the cakes of versailles a d plus so there you go i mean if you saw the movie and you liked it or loved it or hated it uh, please let, let me know down below. I would like to know your thoughts on it. But um, yeah, it's just a weird hodgepodge of things going on that I like and I, I see potential and then just the kind of squandering. I I don't know. It's a weird experience for sure. Um, but yes, uh, D plus for me. Uh, let me know down below. Uh, even if I don't reply to all the comments, I do read them all. If you're watching this on YouTube and you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get up to date on whenever I review anything, you can do just that. If you want these more in audio form and you're more of a podcast person, I do record them both at the same time. And, uh, my real me and Cole in the movie podcast podcast feed will do, uh, just that for you. You can subscribe to that so you can get these more in audio form so you don't have to see my ugly face. Uh, but that will do it for this review, guys. I'm Chase Lee for DallasMovieScreenings.com. And tune in next time for whatever I review next. I will see you guys later.